Hey, good evening, everyone. This is Anj, and today we are going to start with our next topic, that is uh, user process, or what we call as a process architecture. So let me start with the process architecture. Till now, I guess everyone is aware with the memory architecture, the memory components, which we have already discussed about shared pool. Library cache, data dictionary cache, database buffer cache, data log buffer cache, Java pool, and large pool. So we have done with this, but in the upcoming sessions, we will add some few more points on that, and we will discuss um, some additional components on that also. So as of now, we are done with the SGA component as of now. So moving forward with the background architecture, background processes. But before that, uh, let me show you something. So today we are going to discuss about the process architecture. In the process architecture, we have number one is the user process. Multiple times we have used this terminology user process when user is triggering some commands and all that. Whenever you are triggering some commands like Whenever you are doing some SQL statements, whether it is a DML, DQL, DDL, or anything, a user process is being generated, and also it can be started. It is started when the database users or a batch process connects to the database instance. Once you establish a connection with the database instance, connection with DB instance, then only you will be able to perform all the DML, DDL, and all the operations for transactional operations. As soon as you are not connected with the database instance, that means you won't be able to do any type of transactions. So it's better to log into the database instance, then you can trigger a DML or DDL operations. So connection establishment is very very important, and this connection establishment will can take place for the first time with the help of listener process, which we have already discussed in our earlier sections. So as of now, we can move with the user process. Whenever a database instance is started and the user process is being connected to the Oracle database instance, and they fire the trigger or they fire a query like DML create altered, uh, drop insert update delete any query, a user process is being generated. So the first process of the process architecture is our user process. Apart from that, we have some database process also. This is our database process. Under database process, we have two type of processes. Number one is server process. Most often we use this term. Server process, and number two is background process. So this is what a memory architecture or process architecture is. Because we have already discussed about memory architecture, this is our second topic. That is the process architecture. In this, there is only two type of process. Number one is user process. When application user is triggering some SQL query, a user process is being getting generated, and it helps in doing connections with the help of listener process and all that. The second type of process is database process. Under database process, we have a server process, and number two is background processes. So whenever someone will ask you what is server process, what is the functionality, so at least you should speak one line on the server process. It is a uh, process, or it is a type of server process, a type of database process under the process architectures. And you have of, uh, observed that uh, while studying about database buffer cache, we have used multiple times the server process name. That the server process used to carry or take the copy of data block from the data files and keep in the buffer. That is the database buffer. So. Server process is very very important in terms of um, connectivity, making the connection of the user process with the database. Server process is very very important in terms of uh, uh, the processes internally, what the uh, database uh, means, uh, with the help of the server process, one can uh, make the establish the connectivity with the disk and the memory segments. So. Server process is basically used to connect the Oracle instance and is started when a user establishes some connections or sessions. Now, the next topic is about the background process. Background process are started when an Oracle instance is started. Whenever you will trigger a command, suppose you have uh, just logged into the database server with the help of 
uh, SSH connectivity and you have set the environment of some database instance it will ask for SID you, the database name or instance name is SHA you have fired this SHA then you should use the SQL plus utility tool and you will fire enter then it will ask for username and in username you have to feed the user like sysdba sys as sysdba because this is a super user and sys has the authority to start your database instance and stop your database instance apart from sys no one has the authority to start and shut down your database so it will ask for credential you have to feed the credential here and then and there you'll be getting one uh, line that uh, the database instance is in idle condition or idle instance what does this idle instance mean? That means your database is in shutdown state. You have to start it. You will get the SQL prompt and just you will trigger startup. Once you fired startup, all the memory component will be viewable here. The shared pool, large pool, along with the size you will be viewing here. As soon as you trigger startup, your instance will be started. And once instance is started, background process will also be started here once instance is allocated background process is also started because instance is what SID is what SID is the memory component plus BG process so once instance is started that means memory is also allocated as well as the background process will take place uh, and will be started so depending on the SID state instance state if the instance is shut down so no memory allocation will take place and no process background process will be started so once SID will be up and running instance will be up and running your memory will be allocated as well as the background process will be started so this is the three thing that we have to understand that about the user process whenever someone is triggering a SQL query a user process is being generated one another process is known as listener process which establishes a connection with the database instance for the first time for the user process and uh, second is the database process among database process we have the server process which is very very important process which helps which also helps in the database connectivity and is being created when the oracle instance is started and a user establishes a connections so keep in mind when instance is up when instance is started and the second thing when user establishes a connection database processes are started or what we call as a server process will be initiated and the same thing whenever oracle instance is started your background process will be started but in data server process until and unless a user establishes a session the server process will not be created once a user session is establishing a connections or sessions that means server process will be generated and will take into consideration whatever user process will fire the command server process has to execute it until and unless server process won't respond because it is not there and what about background process once the instance is started that means background process is automatically started so this is the case scenario about the process architecture so moving forward with the uh, process architecture we have few more topics here yeah we have few more topics like uh, this process structure varies for different oracle database configuration depending on the operating system suppose the code of the connected user can be config configured as a dedicated and shared server there is two more term you should be knowing about that is number one in the previous session, we have understand about the database server. What is DB server? I guess in the first session only, I have made you aware that about a database server. That means the database is being configured. Uh, then they, that will be considered as a database server, and we can denote the database server with the help of host name because to uniquely identify any server remotely, we have the host name and IP in place so that with the help of this, we can able to log into the server with the help of utility tool. It can be multiple utility tool like Toad, SQL Plus, or uh, sorry, uh, Toad or Putty sessions, or you can use SQL Developer also. It will ask for some username, the super username, as well as the credential. With the help of this thing, you can uh, one can able to 
log in to the database server where database is being installed but 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 the user which is connecting to the database instance have to go through two things number one is dedicated server one can ask in the interview also what is the difference between dedicated server and shared server so for each user the database application is run by a user process that is served by a dedicated server process that executes oracle database server code what i mean to say here whenever a user process is triggering any query suppose us is a username which is triggering a sql query once it is triggering a sql query user process is being generated once a user fire a query user process is being generated and if he is uh, or she is firing a query that query will be executed in db instance to execute a query in the db instance that the db should be in up and running condition so once the db instance is up and running condition first thing if user one wants to connect to the database instance it requires some authentication entity in middle in the middle and that authentic uh, or mid tier uh, process what we call as a listener process so what this use, uh, listener process does it re accepts the request of the client what this client wants and it will fetch for the records if that database server or ip is present in the mark, uh, in the remote host or not if it is available then listener will accept the request and make the connectivity with the instance but before making a connectivity of the instance a server process will be generated and this server process will check for the authenticity it will check for the credential username and all that stuffs if everything is fine then the user process establishes a session once the user process has fired some query they are wanting to log into the database instance they have asked with the help of database server name they have the host name and ip with this host name and ip with user name and credential they have triggered some commands a process will in between will accept the or listen the client request a user request and it establishes a connections with the help of server process a server process will be generated in the server side and it will search for the instance name port number there are few entity few components few parameters which need to be uh, validated before making a connection and it can be validated with the help of server process once validation is completed the user one us one will be able to make a connectivity with the database and once the connectivity is made listener process is no longer be in use once the connectivity is intact so listener process is nowhere so whatever user is firing a query the server process will take that query into consideration what user process will fire the query can be executed with the help of this server process if another user is coming and triggering some query it has to go with the via listener process because for the first time to establish a connection listener process should be required and once listener process accept the connection it will establish another server process and same server process will validate the username and credential if validation is successful this us1 will be able to create a sessions or make a connections with the database instance next what this query will this us2 will be firing a query that query will be executed with this server process that means whatever this us2 this user or this user is uh, triggering the uh execution of the query or execution of the demand of the us1 and us2 is fulfilled by their own server process like sp1 and sp2 that is why we call this server process as a dedicated server process because this server process is dedicatedly working for this u2 and sp1 this server process is dedicatedly working for us1 what us1 is saying that will be fulfilled by the server process one what us2 is doing asking that will be fulfilled by sp2 so dedicatedly this server process is being working with this 
uh, whatever US one or US two is trying to say that. And remember, for the first time the, of the connectivity, listener process will be in use. And for the second time, once session is being established, listener process is no longer in use because already you have made the connection, made, made the connectivity, and listener process is already there. You fulfill your requirement. So this is what we call a dedicated server. But in case of a shared server, there is a uh, means uh, one more mediator comes into a picture. In the case of shared server, there is a dispatcher which comes into picture that we will study in the part of PG. But remember, this dedicated server. is mostly used in the production and non product uh, domains in the market and this is the default configuration when you are configuring a database if you are creating a database with the help of dbca or manual you should be knowing that the default configuration default server process will be a dedicated server process so this is it about the dedicated server process and uh, shared server process and about the database servers and uh, in the next upcoming sessions we will study about the background processes so till then thank you so much stay safe bye